Good evening, this is MemphisWeather.net meteorologist Eric Procius bringing you the information you've been looking for about tomorrow's winter weather episode that uh, looks to be uh, pretty well on track. We've been uh, providing you updates the last few days over social media. Uh, blog post last night that had quite a bit of detail. Uh, this will be our last opportunity to provide you with exactly what we're thinking as we head into this event that's going to start overnight tonight. Um, we will start with uh, the, the basics of what you're looking for here. We'll get into a little bit of the detail um, uh, from some of the model data and so forth uh, without going into too much detail and then wrap it up after that. So let's Let's start off with what to expect. First of all, we do have uh, rain in the area right now. I'm recording this just after 7.30 on Thursday night. There is a strong cold front, very sharp boundary uh, that is going to be moving through. Uh, it looks like it's going to be in here uh, about 9 or 10 o'clock tonight as that moves through. Temperatures that are currently near 60 degrees are going to plummet. Uh, I posted uh, earlier on uh, Twitter an uh, example of what's going on up in St. Louis where they were at 65 today. There's about a 30 degree temperature difference across the front as it moves through there. They're expecting a low tonight of 15. So this is a no fool and cold front that's coming through tonight. Uh, we are going to have rain that's going to continue uh, even behind the cold front as those temperatures start to drop. Rain could be heavy at times uh, during the overnight hours. I wouldn't be surprised to see or hear a rumble of thunder in there um, between uh, probably 8 and 11 p.m. or so this evening right about, about the time that front is coming through. And then as those temperatures drop from around 60, they will drop quickly. And by about 3 or 4 in the morning, temperatures will be down to 32 degrees, and we will start seeing freezing rain at that time. Uh, freezing rain, if you'll uh, recall, is rain that is falling as a liquid. So when you look out your window, it's going to look just like it does when the temperature is 60. Only the temperature, the ground temperature, the surface temperatures, uh, will have dropped to 32. And so when it uh, uh, comes in contact with objects, trees, bushes, power lines, uh, anything that's exposed, uh, it will start to freeze. And so that is what freezing rain is. Uh, that's uh, as that very near surface cold air moves in. And then the cold air that is just aloft in the lowest uh, four or 5,000 feet or so, um, it'll lag the surface cold uh, air by just a little bit. Um, and when it does arrive, which won't take very long, probably within a couple of hours of that time that we reach freezing at the surface, um, that cold air will start to push in here and we will see a transition over to sleet or ice pellets. Uh, that will occur probably uh, by the time we get to um, couple hours after three to four so we're looking at maybe five to six o'clock um, and eventually by the time we get to rush hour or maybe just a bit after we should transition over to light snow as the entire column of air above us drops completely below freezing so we're going to get the uh, full precipitation type sandwich tonight starting with the rain going to freezing rain down to sleet and eventually to light snow. Accumulations are expected with this. Uh, they are not going to be real significant. However, they are going to be enough that is going to result in hazardous driving conditions by the time we get to rush hour tomorrow morning. If you're thinking you're going to get out a little bit early and beat it, I hope that you have plans to set your alarm for about 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, because after uh, after about 4 o'clock, I expect that we're going to start to see hazardous driving conditions, especially on those elevated surfaces. Um, you know where they are, where the trouble spots are, if you've been here for any period of time. Anything that's got air blowing underneath the roadway is going to be a problem. That includes flyovers, bridges, overpasses, um, all of those places where the road is not underlaid by uh, dirt. So um, keep, in, keep that in mind as you head towards rush hour. We're expecting uh, those driving conditions to become uh, somewhat uh, hazardous to perhaps treacherous, uh, especially as we get into the rush hour period. Uh, a note I will also make on this regarding pre-treating of those, uh, the salt brine has not been put down around the metro today, and that is because of the rain that leads right into this event. There's no point in putting down pre-treat on these roads because it simply washes off before the freezing happens. So uh, TDOT has said they will be positioned and ready. The city of Memphis has said they will have their uh, equipment out and ready tonight, and as soon as their problems start to develop, they will take care of it. Um, so I would expect... Uh, early in the morning we will see uh, if you're out and about you'll see uh, salt trucks and so forth positioned in strategic areas uh, ready to start taking care of those <clears throat> hazardous conditions as they develop. 
Another thing that we're going to have to consider with this is the is the likelihood of strong wind tonight. After this front moves through, wind's going to shift around to the north. We'll be seeing gusts up as high as 30 to 35 miles an hour. Um, and you combine that with uh, a little bit of ice on the power lines, and those start blowing around a little bit. Could lead to some scattered power outages. I'm not expecting a widespread uh situation with massive power outages across the area because I don't think the ice is going to be uh, that big of an issue. We will see a little bit, I think. Um, but strong winds blowing to 35 miles an hour um, could certainly cause some of that uh, a type of scattered power outage issues uh, as well as we head towards dawn tomorrow. <clears throat> Behind this uh, system that's moving through, bitterly cold temperatures are expected. We will not get back above freezing during the day tomorrow. On Friday, we will not see any sunshine tomorrow. And so uh, that will definitely slow the melting process. Whatever falls is likely going to remain on the roads or on the uh, grass, wherever it, uh, wherever it falls. Uh, it's going to stay there um, throughout the day tomorrow. As we head into Saturday, low temperatures will be in the mid-20s. We will probably see some sunshine on Saturday, but it's going to be mixed with some clouds, uh, and the high temperature Saturday is only around freezing, as it will be on Sunday as well. So whatever uh, whatever is on the ground is likely going to stick around for just a little while, um, with the exception being those roadways that are treated and or in some direct sunshine where they can um, <clears throat> dry out. And the very cold air mass that we're expecting this weekend is actually going to remain in place through midweek. We may get a bit of a reprieve on Monday, um, but another uh, reinforcing shot of cold air arrives heading into Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, we're looking for another period of well below normal temperatures that will probably last a good five days or so headed towards the middle of next week. <clears throat> as far as the winter storm alerts that are out right now, a winter storm warning is in effect from midnight until 6 p.m. for the counties you see there in uh, pink. That includes Memphis and Shelby County, DeSoto County, Crittenden County, Tipton County, Fayette County, and points to the north and east of those locations, northeast of the metro across West Tennessee. Now to the west and east Arkansas, um, from uh, areas west of Crittenden County and uh, Mississippi County, down through Wynn, Forest City, Mariana, uh, those are all under a winter weather advisory that starts at 9 p.m. tonight and goes till noon tomorrow. That winter storm warning, I should mention, starts at midnight tonight and goes uh, through 6 p.m tomorrow. And then for the counties down in North Mississippi, Tunica, Tate counties in the metro, Marshall County, um, and a good part of the rest of North Mississippi, in fact, uh, are under a winter weather advisory as well. <clears throat> that is in effect from 3 a.m. until 6 p.m. The difference between the winter weather advisory and the winter storm warning is the expected impact uh, to business, commerce, and transportation. Um, none of this is expected to have very significant um, precipitation totals. Uh, however, a mix of precipitation types um, and the fact that uh, this is occurring, especially during the rush hour period tomorrow, um, led the uh, Weather Service to issue the winter storm warning for the metro and for West Tennessee, where uh, totals will also be uh, a little bit higher than they are down in North Mississippi and West over uh, eastern Arkansas. So that is the outline of the alert as we have them right now. <clears throat> this is uh, one model uh, and I will show you a couple others here in a minute um, to give you a brief idea of uh, the types of totals, precipitation totals we might expect. I will give you my specific predictions here in just a moment. Um, but this is from one of our high resolution models that ran the middle of the day today. Um, and you see the four panel here. Upper left is uh, sleet upper right is freezing rain, down in the lower left is rain, and to the upper uh, lower right, I'm sorry, is snow totals. And you see uh, that um, sleet totals uh, are one of our, uh, probably what we're expecting maybe the most of from an icing perspective. Uh, earlier we thought that freezing rain might be a little bit bigger deal. Um, I just still do expect some uh, freezing rain accumulation to occur, but I think a lot of the precipitation after it departs from rain and as it heads towards snow may fall as sleet. Um, and so uh, this particular model is giving us uh, maybe upwards of a quarter of an inch or so of, of sleet or ice pellets. And remember those are basically frozen raindrops. They do not stick to power lines and so forth. Uh, they bounce around and accumulate kind of in the same way that snow does but they are not an issue with trees um, and power lines. Freezing rain is the glaze that we expect um, when the rain falls and then freezes on contact. Um, this particular computer model uh, tends to downplay the freezing rain threat in the immediate metro. However, areas across West Tennessee 
just east of uh, the Memphis area, um, it does uh, print out maybe as much as a tenth of an inch or so of freezing rain, um, and that would be enough certainly to cause some issues. Uh, <clears throat> down in the lower left, uh, rain totals uh, certainly going to be an issue overnight tonight as well. We're going to see uh, maybe upwards of an inch or so of rain, and this particular model does uh, point out that most of the snow is going to be to the north and east of Memphis, um, but it does give us a little bit of snow, and those uh, totals are are maybe up to a quarter of an inch or so. Basically a dusting of snow is what this model says with uh, heavier amounts potentially reaching uh, one inch or more uh, up to the northeast. I want to uh, switch from that actually and go straight into what uh, I am calling for for accumulations here in the metro before we uh, look at a couple of more model solutions. First of all for rain tonight overnight I expect we're going to average uh, an inch of rain across the area. It's going to be pretty heavy at times especially in the middle of the night behind the front and before the temperatures reach freezing. Locally heavier amounts certainly not uh, unexpected um, and we could see a little bit of uh, or hear a little bit of thunder as well during the overnight. For freezing rain, uh, right now it, I'm expecting less than a tenth of an inch most likely, um, but certainly any amount of freezing rain will cause problems for elevated surfaces. Uh, the last time I remember a freezing rain uh, event occurring when it was uh, nighttime like this, uh, it only took a couple hundredths of an inch of freezing rain to start causing problems for the flyovers and for 385, Highway 385. Um, so uh, a tenth of an inch would definitely pose some issues, even half that. Uh, um, will cause some uh, driving issues out there as well. Uh, as far as sleet, uh, I think we could get up to a quarter of an inch of sleet um, and that would uh, not cause again the issues with power lines and so forth but it would create a kind of a crunchy drive on the roads especially on the secondary roads um, where that sleet would accumulate um, and leave basically kind of basically kind of a gravelly type of surface that you're driving on. Uh, it does have more traction than uh, freezing rain does um, but it is also ice. <clears throat> and finally for snow uh, hedging a little bit on this um, because some of the later models that we've been looking at, and we'll look at one here in a minute, are starting to point to the possibility of a mid-morning snowfall that could be a little bit more than what we're predicting right here. I do think the heavier totals for snowfall will be north and northeast of Memphis, um, but right now here in the immediate metro, calling for up to an inch, um, half an inch to an inch or so uh, of snow on top of all of this other uh, precipitation that falls ahead of that. So with that I want to uh, switch over here just for a minute and uh, take a look at <clears throat> a couple of model solutions and then we'll come back and wrap this up here in just a minute. So this is the um, this is the uh, midday run of the GFS or American model that we reference uh, frequently in the blogs and so forth. Um, this is precipitation type and rate, so you're going to see the heavier precipitation um, in the darker colors and the type also shown. This is valid right now, uh, basically at the current time, so we've got the rainfall over the area and you see uh, that it is uh, got sleet back here and a little bit of freezing rain uh, over far northern Arkansas into Missouri. As we move forward forward in time on this. Now this is uh, about 10 o'clock, 9 or 10 o'clock, and you see kind of the uh, brighter colors here. This is where we might expect some of that thunder as the front is moving through. No severe weather tonight, but heavier rain and potentially some thunder as well. Uh, this is midnight, and you see the expansion of the uh, sleet, which is in the purple, and a narrow band of freezing rain in the reds, basically separating that sleet from the rain. As we get to about 3 a.m. here, this is when uh, Shelby County is right down here in the middle, uh, kind of lower left, and the freezing line now is basically where that uh, red is located there, and so it is showing freezing rain by 3 a.m., uh, it could be within an hour or two of that, I think 3 or 4 o'clock, we'll start to see the freezing rain, but the sleet is right behind it, and you notice that the heavier precipitation is right along uh, ahead and along that transition zone right there. As we go to 6 a.m., uh, this uh, <clears throat> this particular model, excuse me, um, is showing uh, sleet over the area and some of it could be coming down at a, a fairly decent clip. Um, as that freezing rain moves out, the air gets colder aloft and so we transition over to sleet. Snow is right behind that and then for 9 a.m. you see most of the ice has moved off to the northeast. Uh, a little bit of light snow back here on the back side of this system and that is still over West Tennessee uh, when we get to noon. I think that's about when it ends. You see as we go into the afternoon 
assume basically that that moves off to the northeast and uh, all of the ice and snow move up uh, to the northeast. So this is again saying a transition somewhere around 3 o'clock, brief freezing rain, uh, a fair amount of sleet perhaps, and then some snow on the back side of that, um, which could give us, uh, you know, an inch or so uh, in that area. <clears throat> this is uh, one more uh, model and this is our high resolution uh, it's called the HER model and high resolution rapid refresh it runs every hour so we get new data from this model every single hour it goes out 18 hours and it's an hourly model so every panel that we look at here will be uh, basically stepping forward one hour at a time and I'm gonna go through a few hours of it here as we get into the middle of the night so here's midnight uh, it is picking up on some freezing rain on the backside you see there's not quite as much sleet um, in in the high resolution model here we definitely have some pockets of heavy rain that are occurring as we head into the midnight hour. And then as we get forward uh, to 3 a.m., you see that there's a fair amount of freezing rain. It is picking up on some purple, which is sleet, kind of mixed in as the as the freezing line approaches. Um, we certainly could uh, possibly see that as we get close to freezing, some mi sleet mixing in with the rain as it transitions over to freezing rain. And then you also see that as we go into the morning, this is, uh, this is 5 o'clock in the morning, and you see kind of of a lull here over the area. This is something we started to see just in the high resolution models here in the last few hours uh, is perhaps a lot of this initial wave of precipitation moving off to the north and another little round kind of firing up back over here to uh, from the Mississippi Delta into northern Louisiana. And you'll notice as that gets closer, uh, this is 7 o'clock, that you've got kind of a mixed area of precipitation. But there is some uh, areas of a little bit heavier snow that are kind of built in here as well. Um, and this precipitation continues. Uh, this is the last frame of this particular run of the model. That's 11 a.m. Um, and it kind of puts us right on the backside. So again, thinking by noon, this should about all be done. Uh, this would give us uh, a little bit more snow and uh, in fact this model is printing off one to maybe two inches of snow. Uh, we're not looking at big five six inch type totals um, but it would give us a little bit more of a coating over the top of that ice uh, perhaps totally obscuring it by uh, a layer of white on top of that. So that's why we're hedging just a little bit on the snow amounts. Um, we've started to see this newer data that's pointing to the possibility that we could get that little secondary round of uh, maybe mostly snow a little bit of sleet as well um, during the morning hours tomorrow kind of in the post rush hour up through um, up towards about noon so I wanted to give you those solutions we have there's still some uh, some somewhat uh, medium confidence on exactly uh, how much we're going to get none of it looks completely uh, disastrous um, but it is uh, certainly enough that it will cause problems with uh, roadways travel and so forth and so we are under that winter storm warning here in the metro We'll wrap it up here with the takeaways. First of all, prepare for hazardous driving conditions, especially on those elevated surfaces starting before the sun comes up tomorrow morning. If you are headed to work tomorrow morning, please allow extra time. If you have a route that uh, can avoid some of those bridges and overpasses, I would highly suggest that. Um, you need to make sure that you give yourself plenty of time because it's probably going to take uh, longer than you would expect. <clears throat> power outages are possible. They are not expected to be widespread, but I would not be surprised to see some scattered power outages, especially with that strong north wind blowing during the overnight and into the morning tomorrow. Even during the day tomorrow, 20, gusts to 25 to 30 miles an hour throughout the day out of the north are going to push our wind chills down into the teens throughout the day tomorrow. Uh, compare that to mid-60s that we had today, and it is going to feel like a f switch was flipped, and we're back to winter. <clears throat> that strong north wind uh, and uh, sub-freezing temperatures are expected throughout the day on Friday. That's going to hinder any uh, clearing of the ice and snow that might fall. Very cold air mass remains in place all the way into next week, at least midweek. Need to be prepared for that as well. We are going to have the latest for you throughout this event. We will be uh, covering on Twitter and Facebook. Um, you can follow us at Memphis Weather one on Twitter. That's the best way to get the most rapid updates. Facebook likes to uh, hold on to some of those posts and show it to you when it thinks you want to see them rather than uh, when you really want to see them. It may be several hours later before you see information that we post on Facebook. We strongly recommend Twitter and for that reason we also strongly recommend that you go and download the MemphisWeather.net app. You do not have to have Twitter to follow our Twitter feed. You can follow it right there in the app um, and I will show you that you can go to app.memphisweather.net 
radar.net and from there download the mobile app for iOS or Android. Radar forecast uh, alerts can be uh, produced on there as well if you uh, opt into Stormwatch Plus. That'll give you winter weather alerts and you can also get all of our social media feeds, the blog, um, and of course the Twitter feed which will be the most uh, timely updates that we can produce. As we go through the morning tomorrow, feel free to send us your pictures and so forth. We'd like to see what's going on out there. Uh, that gives us a good idea of exactly what to expect uh, for those that are just downstream of you. So we appreciate you doing that. I appreciate your time tuning in tonight, and I hope that, uh, that you will take your uh, precautions for tomorrow. Keep those pets uh, warm as well. Don't leave them out in the middle of this. Um, and uh, we'll be talking more as we get into the weekend and early next week, perhaps, about pipes and plants as well. It's going to be a cold, cold weekend. Everybody be safe. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, follow us on social media. We'll keep you updated. Good night.